with Engadget and we're looking at the Sony Ericsson Xperia Neo which is about 320 pounds sterling which is about 515 dollars uh, it's not expensive and you can kind of see that and feel that in the build uh, a lot of people who've asked to hold it have commented that it feels plasticky and I'm inclined to agree with them but to be honest after a week of using it you get used to it there's just one area where the plastic feel the cheap feel is a bit too much which is when you take the back off to expose the micro SD card in there a micro SD card and the SIM slot uh, these just are about as minimal as you could get really uh, to take out the SD card you have to pluck it out like this and then tilt the phone over to get it out which is just a bit embarrassing when you're out and about uh, I don't like that I'm used to a proper memory card holder in there to get the SIM out you take out the battery slide the SIM out and again it's just a really simple slot for the SIM no proper holder and a couple of times I've started the phone and it hasn't registered the SIM so I've had to make sure that I uh, push it in really firmly so that it, it connects right so but now we've um, put the back back on I'm going to turn the handset on using the pad button the power button on the side get a little vibration to tell you it's registered the button push um, and this is one of the key downsides to this phone the amount of time it takes to boot it varies I've measured it as being about a minute 20 or even up to two minutes to boot up and that frankly is just too long so bear that in mind uh, while it is loading I'll give you a quick tour of the device you've got your three Android buttons along the bottom uh, back home and menu and then along the top it's quite a busy top here uh, you've got some sensors, proximity, uh, light, you've got your front facing camera and your speaker. It looks a bit busy perhaps but it's okay. Uh, all the buttons again have been clustered on this side. You've got, um, if I can just get some focus, there you go, you've got the power button there, the volume rocker which is a bit awkward at first but you do learn to find it with your fingers and then the camera button here at the bottom this camera button is, is well positioned, it's fast, it's responsive, but I'll, I'll get to the camera later. And then on this side, there's not a single button there. The bottom, plain, just the little place to uh, pull the back cover off. And then on the top, I've got my 3.5mm headphone jack. I've got an HDMI port there on the right hand side. And then I've got my USB just there. And I've tried out the HDMI, it connects fine to the TV, you can watch back videos and photos, I'm not sure how much you'd use that feature, but it does work. Okay, so here I am, I've uh, waited just under two minutes for this thing to load up, but I'm now into the operating system. Uh, the good news is it's quite a simple install of Android 2.3 Gingerbread. They've just put in a couple of widgets. There's uh, the Timescape app here, which is just an aggregator for all your social media. Also, they've, they've made a few changes to the gallery and the, the, the media home screen. They're not too major. You can actually get to the uh, original Android uh, media functions quite easily, and these aren't too bad. Um, and you can actually see here the screen on this thing is really, is really nice. If I, if I load up a video... Um, here we go and put it in landscape. So Sony Ericsson say there's Bravia technology in this screen, basically image processing to make it more, the colors nicer, a bit sharper. And I'm not sure if you can believe all the marketing, but it is a very nice screen and video plays back extremely well on it. Some Engadget guys here playing, I guess what they would call football. Uh, yeah, very good video. A downside to the screen is the uh, the, the size of it width weighs 3.7 inches across there and if you're trying to type a, to type a message on there uh, you I, I mean even after a week I'm struggling and uh, also the autocorrect isn't very good on this thing if I try and well it just doesn't add um, apostrophes at all so I'm I want to say I'm and it just it I'm I'm not happy Nevertheless, I am happy with the screen. Uh, we're looking at 
five, 854 by 480 in terms of resolution, uh, and it's nice to look at. And of course, this is Android, so we can play Flash uh, videos on there. If I go to the browser, it's a, it's a zippy Qualcomm 1 gigahertz processor in there, the same as you'll find in the Arc. It copes just fine, really. Uh, it, it, it's not dual core, but then you're not going to get dual core for this kind of money. So um, let's go to let's go to BBC. Use uh, for look at a bit of flash video on there. Here we go. Um, yeah, you, you may notice some lag switching between home screens. Um, maybe coming pressing the home button to pull out of an app. But generally, the processor keeps up fine. If I. It's rendering pretty well, too. Astronauts on their final mission. Ah, oh, that was a lucky strike. And then. It should just start. I'll tell you, there's a little part of uh, everybody who looks at something like that and says, I cannot believe we're here. This is absolutely fantastic. Okay, a quick look at iPlayer, which I'll play full screen. Thank you. Good speaker, good screen, really nice for watching media back on. This is definitely a plus point of this phone. I think that, in a way, they've, they've gone for the cheap plastic case. <coughs> Let me turn this down, hold on. They've gone for the cheap plastic case in order to allow them to be able to splash out in other areas like the screen. And I think they would also claim the camera is um, above average too, although I want to move on to the camera. So let's get out of, let's get out of that. Uh, and I'm wearing flip-flops. I, I haven't dressed for this at all. There you go. The, the camera, it loads up generally fast. You can switch to um, stills or video very quickly and generally capture what's going on around you nice and quickly. Uh, the only problem is, and it is a big problem, here is the settings. These are not the full settings that you'd get on a native Android install like on the Nexus S. And what's missing, most importantly, is the ability to control compression. This is an 8 megapixel camera. Um, but it compresses all your shots down to one megabyte. By comparison, the iPhone 4 is five megapixels and it will give you a 1.7 megabyte image, so a lot less compression. And so what you'll find is if I actually um, go into a photo I've taken, it's got nothing to do with resolution, it's all about compression artifacts. Let's see, see, I only, I, even here, this level of zoom, I'm noticing jagginess and JPEG compression. But my key point here is that a very good camera is hobbled by bad compression. And I've also asked Sony Ericsson about this. There may be a fix for it. Uh, maybe I have an old version, but I don't think so. I think it's a genuine problem with the camera. For my full review, check out my text feature, and I'll, and I'll put all the comparisons, everything I mentioned, in my text piece. This is just a quick overview. Thanks a lot. Thanks for